Hi everybody, Sue Kaiser here. I'm sitting in the garden on the west side of Ebenezer, right outside Fellowship Hall, ready to explore this week's Sunday School lesson with you. In last week's lesson, our friend Paul, in a letter, writes about how he became a follower of Jesus. Paul proclaimed that a friendship with God cannot happen from trusting in the things we do, but rather from trusting Jesus. Paul continues writing to the Galatians that they become right with God based on faith, not what they do. He declares that everyone is united in Jesus Christ with no divisions. Paul is frustrated with the Galatians. They have been turning their focus back on the laws and have been measuring people by how well they follow those laws. Paul writes to remind them of the power of the Holy Spirit and how they began their faith by embracing that Holy Spirit. God's promise to bless Abraham was for everyone, including the Gentiles. Before Jesus, the law helped people to navigate their relationship with others and with God. Paul celebrates that in Jesus Christ we have freedom, that all are children of God. There are no barriers to keep us from God. Instead, we are all part of the blessing of Abraham. To understand Paul's use of letters and his relationship with the people of Galatia, as well as with many other churches, it's helpful to understand the geography affecting these relationships. Let's head inside. I've got some maps that I want to show you. Hi again. When I was outside before, I told you that Paul was frustrated with the Galatians. He didn't like the fact that they were um, following all these laws again, instead of just being in the community with one another and with God. So Paul um, decided that he was going to um, hit the road and he was going to travel and spread God's word, Jesus's word of love, um, all over the lands. So if you remember during Holy Week, we were in Jerusalem and that's where um, Paul started. He left Jerusalem to spread the word of Jesus as far as he could. In his lifetime, in Paul's lifetime, he traveled almost 7,000 miles to teach people about Jesus and God's love. Remember now, this was before cars or trains or planes. He had to walk everywhere. So 7,000 miles, that's pretty far. So some of the places that he visited, um, like I said, he started out in Jerusalem, and then he went on up to Damascus, to Tarsus, over to... Um, 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 Ephesus, up to Philippi, over down to Corneth, and then over all the way to Rome. So, like I said, in his lifetime, he traveled far and wide to be able to spread Jesus' word, God's love, all over the lands. I'm going to be sending a map home um, of this area that we just talked about with all of those cities so you can see um, a little bit of, about the travels that Paul had. And also I'm going to be sending another sheet home that gives you some other places to look for um, on perhaps a map that you can pull up on the internet. And then it's interesting when you find a certain distance from point to point like Jerusalem to Damascus, and then try to figure out a spot like Sheboygan to where is that far. All right, I'll catch up with you in a little while when we read the scripture. Hi, everybody. Um, today's scripture reading 
comes from Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9, and then 23 to 29. Um, there's three words that I think are really important and that I want you to know. So throughout the story as I read it, I want you to do the action that I'm going to teach you now. So the first word is foolish. Foolish. And it means lacking good judgment. So every time that you hear that word foolish in our scripture reading, I want you to go foolish and just tug on each ear. So foolish. The next word is Abraham. Do you remember who Abraham was? That's right. He was the gentleman that was promised that he would have as many descendants as stars in the sky. So when we think of Abraham, we're going to pretend to stroke our beard. So that's our Abraham. So foolish and Abraham. And the final word, word is blessing. A blessing is a very good thing that's given by God. The motion for a blessing is going to be this. It's what Rev always does at the end of a service when she gives us the final blessing or benediction. She always goes like that. So that's going to be our signal, our sign for blessing. So here we go. Foolish, Abraham, and blessing. So here comes our scripture from Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. You foolish Galatians, who is making you so confused? You know the whole story about Jesus. You were there, and the Spirit is with you. But you are still foolish. Do you really think the Spirit is with you because you always obey the law? Do you really think you have to do everything just right to have God with you? That is so foolish. But remember Abraham. We remember him as a good, as good because he believed God. And we are the descendants of Abraham, and God promises to bless not just Abraham, but all of his descendants too. Do not be foolish when we believe like Abraham, we will be a blessing too. The law kept us safe, but bound while we waited for faith. When Jesus came, we could have faith in him. Let's not be foolish. Let's remember that all of us are a part of this community. It does not matter how we are different. We all are a part of this blessing. We are heirs to the promise through Abraham. Very good. That was a good scripture reading. See you in a little while. Hi again. I'm traveling all over Ebenezer today. Well, here we are in the sanctuary. And this is where we baptize people into our church community. When we baptize someone, we not only welcome them into this, our Ebenezer church family, but we also promise to help them find ways to grow closer to God. One of the ways we challenged our congregation to grow during 2020 was to study and learn about becoming wise, welcoming, supportive, inclusive, and engaged in areas surrounding mental health. Our yes vote on January 31st of this year shows that we are willing to take on Jesus's and Paul's challenge of being welcoming to all people. I wanted to share with you the baptism of one of our newest members. Here it is. 
Friends, we gather to celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. And as we come to this font of living water, let's recall the meaning of baptism. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one spirit we are baptized into the one body of Christ. God creates all things, and all life is a gift of God, and for this we give thanks. We are especially thankful for children who remind us powerfully and personally of God's creative powers. Children are also a sign of God's way of salvation. The prophet Isaiah writes, The wolf shall lie down with the lion and the lamb together, and a little child shall lead them. The powerless shall lead us. Jesus came into our midst as a child, and we are to come to Jesus with the openness of children. This is the water of baptism. Water is used for cleansing in our daily lives. So it expresses a washing away of our sin by God's forgiving love already present for us before we need it or before we want it. Out of this water, we rise with new life, forgiven of sin, immersed in God's grace members of the body of Christ, the church. The sacrament of holy baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Since the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the seal of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth into Christian faith and discipleship. You have this look on your face like, whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> so I would ask you, Corey and Amanda, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, we do. And of all of you, I ask, do you promise to partner with this family of God's people to teach this child that he may be led to profess Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please answer, we will with the help of God. And do you promise, according to the grace of God given to you, to grow with this child in faith, to help them to be faithful members of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence and by offering the nurture of the Church so that they may affirm, he may affirm his baptism? If so, please answer, we do with the help of God. Friends, Jesus the Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate the sacrament promise your love and your support to the one about to be baptized? If so, I invite you to express your support by joining with me in the congregational response. With God's help, we will seek to live in the example of Christ so that, surrounded with the love and support of the church, this and every child of God may be nurtured in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way of eternal life. So what shall be the name of this child? Hey, baby boy. Savior Aiden, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, yeah, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit be upon you, Xavier Aiden, child of Christ. Welcome to the church. Yeah, is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Well, you know what, Xavier, I am just going to give them a really good view of you. Because all the members of your church family are certainly not here today, but the members of your immediate family are. So we just want to have the opportunity to make sure that people get a chance to see you, right? And they'll look forward to meeting you. And maybe by that time, you'll be running up and down these aisles, huh? Yeah. You'll be running up and down the aisles, ready to experience this as home. So, Xavier Aiden, you are certainly a blessing. And we pray that we will be a blessing for you. Mm. 
So before um, I share a prayer with you, we have some gifts. So first, I want to present this quilt that was made for you by the ECJ Circle of Ebenezer. And we pray that as Xavier Aiden is wrapped in this quilt made with love, that he will know that he is surrounded with our prayers and the love of God. And we have his first Bible. So you can understand God's love, you know the stories. And here's his baptismal certificate. And Grayson, if I can get your help in just a moment, we're gonna pray first and then Grayson, if you can help me put the leaf on the tree, that would be amazing, okay? Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's pray. God, our creator, we pray that this child grows in years, just as he grows in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we pray that by the guiding and renewing influence of the Holy Spirit, Xavier Aiden may serve you faithfully all through his life. Bless all those who have Xavier Aiden in their care, that we may keep our vows, living in your spirit, sharing regularly in worship so that from our words and ways, Xavier Aiden may learn to walk with you in fullness of life. Through Christ our Savior we pray. Amen. Okay, Grayson, you want to help me? Didn't you just love that baptism? As I said earlier, a baptism is an event for all of us here at Ebenezer. We are asked to give our love and support to the child being baptized and their family. At the end of the baptism, Rev. Lori and the baby's older brother came back to this corner of the sanctuary to put his star on Ebenezer's baptism tree. This is where part of the journey of life takes us. The church must be a community where all are encouraged to participate and there are no outsiders. As we build relationships with each other, we give opportunities for people to encounter God's love. We are all children of God and are reminded of this in today's closing prayer. I'd like you to repeat after me with words and motions. I am a child of God. Now you. I need God's love and the help of my neighbor. You are a child of God. You are loved by God and by me. Each of us are loved and each of us can love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a great day. See you soon. Hi again. I've got some extra activities for you today. We're going to do Clothed with Christ, Picture of Human Diversity, and Stars in the Sky. So the first one, Clothed with Christ, you can really take any piece of clothing you want. I picked a cap that I had. Um, but you could do, they suggested shoelaces or scarves, you could do a t-shirt, and you're just taking fabric, fabric markers, 
and your writing, God is love. So let me finish mine up quick. And you just write it right on your piece of clothing. So that's one, clothed in Christ, and then hopefully go out and wear it. Another one that we're doing, or that we have for you to do, is called um, a picture of human diversity. And what you're doing here is taking the scripture reading that says, For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. And that's from Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. And you're going to glue that along with pictures onto, I have it on a, on a picture uh, board. You can put it on a hard construction paper type thing. And you're going to use either glue sticks or regular glue to put everything down. And then over the top of everything, when you have it all done, you could mod, mod podge over it to make it all um, clear and glossy and look nice. Kind of like this picture over here, not about the same theme, but it gives you an idea of the collage that you would make. And of course, I just grabbed pictures from a variety of magazines that I had around the house. So that's project two. And then over here, probably the best project, is called um, All the Stars in the Sky. And we were talking today about Abraham and the blessing of Abraham and how God promised him that he would have as many descendants as there were stars in the sky. So we're going to first take a graham cracker and we're going to put chocolate frosting on top of it. And that chocolate frosting represents the night sky. And then we have white chocolate chips, and we're going to take a lot of white chocolate chips and put them on top of that dark sky because God promised Abraham as many descendants as there were stars in the sky. And now, of course, you get to eat it as long as mom and dad say it's okay. Have fun with your craft projects.